we promised you engineering goodness throughout this coverage of Supercompute 2024 here in Atlanta, and we are bringing it. We've talked power, cooling, GPUs, CPUs, and the conversation continues with our sponsor, Dale. This is 6.5 on the road. I have with me, Tim, you're a engineering technologist with Dell Technologies. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Please All right, on. so I've talked to my co-host, Dave Nicholson, about coming into this show. We pictured, you know, a hundred kilowatt data center rack as a lot, but this show has redefined that baseline for me. Tell me, what are you seeing? Yeah, so the 100, 120 kilowatt racks that you're starting to see out on the floor, um, yeah, that's, that's today's technology. Dell is leading there. We've uh, shipped some of the first customers out uh, in the marketplace today. They're out running with blinking lights. But we planned that architecture from the start to hit about a half megawatt, 500 kilowatts in a rack. So if you take a look at our uh, IR 7000 racks, they're designed today to take you to half a megawatt. We can take that infrastructure with some modification and we're targeting what we see as possible is getting that up close to a megawatt per rack not tomorrow, but at some point in the future. Because look, anybody who underestimates the, what our colleagues in the Silicon world are doing is, is doing so at peril, right? So there's a lot to unpack there. And we're gonna start by the basics. What has been driving the use case for all of this power? Yeah, so, so there's a couple things here, right? So. Talking about a megawatt data center is not a crazy thing at all. Talking about a megawatt rack, that starts people thinking that's crazy. The, the reality is it, it comes down to the fact that we want to have all of this information processed in close proximity to, to, to each other. So we've got all these processors. We need them talking to each other at very high speed. And that forces us to put them as close as possible together in the same rack. And if all of those processors are 1,000 watts, you know, we end up with a 100 kilowatt rack. If they're 2,000 watts, 200 kilowatt rack, and you can do the math. And so we know where we're going, uh, and we know what that density is demanding, and we know that networking is only going to become more central to this and communication between those processors. And so we've just got to think about how do we keep all of that really tight in space, and that means very, very power dense racks. So with these power dense racks, the, the variations start to matter, right? So as we're thinking about components, drives, memory, uh, things that we kind of just took for granted, how should engineers and organizations be thinking about these individual components as they, as they make them up? Or is this something we should just leave up to Dell? Um, so Dell's strength since our founding has been to allow the customer to make those decisions, right? We will obviously come in with recommendations, with, with validated configurations, but ultimately we're about allowing the customer to get the compute they need and what they want. So when that, how that relates to power density and cooling is, you know, we don't believe in controlling your choices by constraining everything under a layer of copper, right? We want to, to cool what needs to be cooled with liquid, but then we're going to leave some components out, you know, easy to service, easy to change, easy to, to configure, like drives, like certain parts, certain uh, memory components and, and so on, um, that they're gonna remain air-cooled for the foreseeable future. Um, and, and, and allow what you were just talking about, allow the customer to say, you know, I really want this particular drive, you know, this, by that time, what would it be? 250 terabytes, 300 terabytes, who knows, right? But let the customer choose that, let them choose the network interface card they need um, and not be constrained by saying, well, you know, Tim didn't design a cold play for that, so we can't put that in there, right? We wanna keep that choice. So, so that means that, that we're engineering the, the power and cooling in such a way that we can still allow very, very efficient cooling of these air-cooled components together with all the liquid that's coming into the rack um, 
And if we think about ca capturing 90% of that heat to liquid, 10% of a megawatt is still 100 kilowatts. That's, you know, that's a lot of air cooling still, but we got you covered. We, we're, we're taking care of that today as well. So to allow that flexibility, allow you to choose the drives, the memory, whatever you need, um, and still have a very efficient and uh, power dense rack. So let's talk about cooling. You've mentioned it a couple of times. Air cooling is just not even an option anymore for CPU in processing. To cool off these thousand watt CPUs and processors in a single dense rack, when you're getting up to the 100 kilowatt range, becomes unreasonable. However, the infrastructure for cooling doesn't seem to be there, at least not in mass. What are you seeing? Yeah, so we are definitely in a transition period. This has come faster than people expected. Um, we had some visibility into this, but when you're talking about brick and mortar, it, it can only move so fast. And we've just come out of a supply chain constrained period, right? So, so you're exactly right. Um, we are seeing However, customers being surprisingly agile in figuring out how to get liquid where they need it. Um, and we are listening to them and trying to move with them. So you'll see in our portfolio, some people have been surprised that our GPU servers have been air cooled to date, right? That was a conscious choice because most of our customers are still air cooled, but we can bring liquid to the rack and we can help our customers figure out how to do that without necessarily having to plumb up the whole rack and have, have cold plates and everything. And we can still make that really efficient with a rear door heat exchanger. And we've demonstrated that ship thousands of very dense GPU racks that are cooled with a rear door heat exchanger. It's still liquid to the rack, but we're showing that, hey, our energy consumption is the same or lower than some of our competition with DLC. So, so what I'm saying is we're thinking about this and, and figuring out how do we bridge that gap, provide the compute today that can be deployed today in all these, you know, all, using this billions of dollars of investment in data centers, but bridging to the future. So as we go to, as you said, as we get to beyond a thousand watts, it's gonna be really challenging to blow enough air through there. You're gonna need gale force winds on, <laughs> on these, you know, inside of these servers. Um, but there are also new innovations, some of which I can't quite talk about right now, but where we're uh, looking to allow customers to stay air-cooled even with 1200 watt, 1500 watt, 2000 watt GPUs if they need to. Now, it's not going to be quite as dense, right? Still, the data center is going to have to add probably some, some cooling towers or some other components to get that heat out into the environment. So that it's not for free, but we're definitely working every aspect to allow the most dense racks possible, you know, 200 watt, 200 kilowatt, 300 kilowatt, but also allow those customers who just for a lot of reasons can't get there today to allow them to take advantage of the most advanced technology uh, with different cool technology. So we were briefed by uh, Jeff Clark's team a couple of weeks ago. and He was saying, you know what, Dell isn't a power company. So you're, they're not gonna solve the power uh, problem directly, but you do have to work with customers that do need to solve these problems. How have they been solving the challenge that, you know what, my data center was designed for 15K racks, and now I'm pushing that to 50, 60, and 120. How are the customers solving these problems from a practical power generation perspective? Uh, a lot of creativity um, and a lot of work being done by myself and my colleagues to look at how can we adapt infrastructure that wasn't necessarily purpose-built data center infrastructure, but exists in a place where power exists, right? Mm. So in, in, for some of our customers, that's been, that's been the mode. So that there's, there's, there's a shell, there's power. So we have experts that are able to say, well, here's what we recommend for a power bus structure that you can implement in this environment, I can come in and say, well, here's what we recommend to put in cooling that isn't going to break the bank. You know, we'll, we'll make it real easy for you to just hook up a couple hoses per rack. Here's the requirements. Um, 
start hiring the plumbers and get that in. You know, so it's, it's very intimidating to think about from the start. I know uh, a lot of our customers have these, I think some, some fears built up about liquid and about getting that much power in, but, but we've got the, the expertise to come in and, and advise. We're not the final engineers, right? We want them to hire the, the proper engineering firms for that, that area to, to sign the papers. But we, we've been working on these designs to help them get there fast. One of the things we're proud of is helping our customers deploy really fast because they're spending hundreds of millions, billions of dollars for this compute. They need it to start generating income. And so we're, we're to, to get right back to your question is we're just trying to provide uh, validated designs to help them deploy wherever they get that power, wherever they can find it and, uh, and get, get to making money with their compute. Now we can't have a conversation about power and cooling without having the conversation about sustainability. A lot of your customers, including Dell yourself, you have very aggressive sustainability goals. How has this massive explosion in compute impacted the engineering level of the problem? Yeah, um, exactly. So we're working this issue on all levels. So it, it starts with the power itself, driving to more uh, energy efficient power supplies. We're going from 90% to this generation, uh, especially as we look to ORV3, we're looking at 96 to 97% efficient power supplies. 7% on 100 kilowatts, seven kilowatts we're saving per rack. You multiply that out. So that's a big savings right there. Um, we're implementing within our firmware, a lot of different techniques to optimize energy use. Um, again, some, some IP here, but some, some real interesting things on our GPU servers where um, we actually uh, are adding some situational awareness to the server to know, hey, there's actually some additional fans helping me out. I don't need to drive my fans as hard. I can lower the power that way. So we're really looking at it from the, the, that aspect, from kind of the inside out but also looking at it at the rack level, how can we ensure that that rack is using the minimum energy possible by, by looking at power delivery and cooling? Because cooling traditionally has consumed about 40% of the energy that was used for compute. An additional 40% is needed for cooling. Hmm. I mean, so that's basically wasted energy that's not being useful. And so we're wanting to cut that down to less than 10%. You know, you hear about PUE and so on. So that, that initial number comes from a PUE of about 1.5, which is a really good data center today. We want to get that down to 1.1, 1.2 or lower so that our customers can deploy more compute for the power they have and use that power to make money. So that entails really efficient cooling, which we're, we're helping our customers deploy. And then also, as I said, optimizing the power, getting that redundancy they need without over-designing, which is another way you waste power and waste energy, is you know, trying to, to over-design, be super conservative. We're saying, well, look, we're giving you redundancy features that allow you to keep rolling through an outage without necessarily having to double up on everything. So there's all sorts of aspects to it. Server power supplies, server firmware, rack design, cooling design, and facility power. Yeah, it, it really is a mind shift in not just the data center industry, but the enterprise. We're used to overbuilding and having more capacity that we need. In this new world, we really do need to tighten that, this and that up. The more productivity we, and more efficiency we get out of our systems, the less power and cooling that we need, thus helping us uh, achieve our goals. Tim, there's two acronyms that you use, and I really want to do our audience a service by making sure we define them. ORV3 and DLC, quick sure. minute on those two? Yeah, so ORV3 stands for Open Rack Version 3. It's, um, it's a uh, rack architecture that came out of the Open Compute Project, or another acronym, OCP. Um, there's a standard form factor for servers and power cells and other equipment that slides into that and uh, we conform to that. But be outside of that kind of what we call the payload area where you're putting your compute and so on, there's some flexibility in the standard. And what Dell looked at is like, well, our customers are not Microsoft or Meta. They're not building out 
100,000 of the exact same server. So we need to add some flexibility there. So we, we made the rack a bit deeper, 1,200 millimeters versus 1,000 millimeters. We made it a bit wider, 750 versus 600, so that we could actually provide that flexibility for the networking and power requirements of our enterprise customers. That includes um, what we believe is the, uh, what we see as the first kind of enterprise ready DLC based ORV3 rack. So we installed permanent manifolds in the back of the rack uh, with open OCP, open compute uh, uh, standard connectors on them. And those connectors, that, that uh, liquid delivery system for direct liquid cooling is already geared for the future. It's already geared, uh, designed to let us get to the 500 kilowatt rack today. So our, our customers can buy that rack and put in our cooling, to, uh, put in their servers today and know that the next generation is just gonna plug right in. There's a lot there. So let me talk real briefly about direct liquid cooling. Direct liquid cooling refers to uh, the, the fact that we're actually taking liquid into the server, running through some hoses to cold plates or heat exchangers that sit on top of the processors and pull that heat directly off of the processor. So you, I don't need any air movement. I don't need any fans to get that heat out. So that's DLC or direct liquid cooling. Um, there's a lot of details there. We can dive deeper on that if you wish. No, I, I think all of my gaming friends are now yeah. looking at us and saying, we told you so. But we knew it was going to come to the data center and here at Supercompute 2024 in Atlanta, Georgia, we're seeing it. There is no other platform you're going to get this high level conversation, understanding the business value of DLC and ARV3 other than the 6.5 on the road. Stay tuned for more end to end coverage from the business value to the deep technical conversations with experts such as Tim as we continue our coverage from Supercompute 2024.